Hi, I'm Joe Stevenson, and this is part one of a two-part video series that's going to cover KFX RAM view and its use with Codasys version 3.5. We'll start off uh, creating a project and also variable lists and variables for both RAM and EEPROM data, and then we'll export that data and import it into our Codasys project. And then I'll show you how to just do a basic setup of that Codasys project so that everything compiles and gets your data ready to be used. Part two will cover actually using the data in Codasys and then logging into your RAMView project so that you can read and write data and, um, and see live values. When you open RAMView, you will see options for selecting an existing project and if it's not already cleared out, just click clear. And then you'll see options for communication. For now, we're just going to work offline because we don't have anything to log into. And then click OK. So we'll go to File, New Project. I'm going to work with a 3CM controller, so I'll type that in. It's going to ask us where we want to store the project, so I will just enter a name here. You can set password access for different levels of uh, user access here. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now. And lastly, it's asking us to create a name for the default list of variables. So I'm going to say this is going to be a RAM list one. Click OK, saved. And now we have um, a basic project created with a single variable list and a single variable inside that list. There are two modes of operation in this program, and those are controlled by this options edit mode field. So when it's off, uh, you can't edit any of the parameters, but you have access to the functional controls for like reading and writing data to the project um, when you're logged into a controller that's running the project. When you're in edit mode, uh, those controls go away, but now you have access to edit your project, create variable lists, create variables, edit the properties for those variables. So that's where I'll start here. So if we go back up to um, options, we have um, some, some basic options here for just viewing and working with the project. Um, if we go to edit, we have all these controls for adding new variable lists, um, inserting variables, pending, etc and uh, project options here is where you can set up some uh, things like these default sets and we'll go into those a little bit later but what these are, are basically um, different groups of default values that you can apply to these variables so to start off uh, you see that, that it created this RAM list by default and what this is, it's a group of variables that you can read from and write to, and it'll store the, the working values that you're using in RAM. So they have data type settings, um, min and max values, access control for different password levels, and you have these default sets, again, that you can choose um, in RAM view to, to use as a default list or default values for these variables. Uh, you've got scaling, number of digits, things like that. So if I wanted to create an EEPROM list, I would go to Edit, Add New List, give it a name, call it EE List 1. And now we created a EE list. It gives it a variable new parameter. And I have to change the list type to EEPROM here. And you notice when I do that, some things changed here, namely the address column and it has an address zero because everything in EEPROM needs a specific address. Now I want to set a CRC a checksum for this so that it's an extra check when we're working with this EEPROM data and codices. It'll be able to, to tell us if the data is valid or not. So I'm going to click CRC and confirm that I want to include a checksum. And for this, I'm just going to say that this EEPROM list is going to go from address 0 to 1,000. I'm just going to allot 1,000 bytes for, for this EEPROM list. So since the CRC is 2 bytes, I'm going to set this to start at 998. So it will take up bytes 998 and 999. 
and then we'll have room for the next list to start at a thousand. So I'll leave this at 998. And now I can add data in this list all the way up to that address. And you can always move that address later if you need to. So here we see this is uh, this variable here, new parameter. It's a type uint8, one byte, and it's going to start at address zero. So if I want to add a new variable, uh, I can come in here, edit, append variable, which is also just the down key. So you can just hit down key and it'll add a new variable. And you see that it automatically incremented the EEPROM address from zero to one based on the size of this previous variable. So if I change, uh, let me rename this to new parameter two. If I change this to a uint 16, two bytes, the next variable I add should start at three because it's gonna increment this number by two to leave room. So if I do uh, append variable, we'll see that it starts at three now. So if I go back to let me, let me rename this to uh, new parameter three. So if I go back to my RAM list, um, again, you'll see there's no address information there. You can just add variables and um, fill in the data for them, and that's all you need to worry about. If you want to have uh, default data for these variables to use, uh, what you can do is you can work with this default sets. So say I want to have two sets of data to choose from. Um, I can change this to two and click set. And it's gonna ask if you wanna set data for all lists. And I'm just gonna say no for this. I just wanna set it for this active list. So it's only gonna affect RAM list one. So now we can see that there are two lists to select from and they both have zero data in them. Uh, and here if I uh, if I select two here, I can see both at the same time. So I can say I want the default data for this to be one and the default data for the other list to be two. And now we have these two separate lists and I can use kfx functions to load these default values into my variables here. Let me give this a unique name. So you have the option to load different sets of default data, which can be really handy uh, depending on what you're doing in your application. So for now here, I'm gonna save, make sure the project's saved. And I want to export the, uh, the project and we're gonna export it for use with Codasys version 3.5. So we go to export here come down to Codasys and we're going to do the Codasys v3.x XML for driver library 2.x. So this is uh, the latest release of RamView will use this um, this export option here. So I go here, export, uh, choose a folder. So here I have my RamView uh, example folder and it's going to um, create an export file here and I will save that. And now we can go look at this. Uh, let me go to my demos. And what we see here, we have this exp file. And that's what we'll use to import into Codasys. Um, you also see the different lists that we created. So here's my EEPROM list and my RAM list. Now this DEF file is our project file. And this is a file that you can continue editing and if you want to make a read-only project that is um, locked for editing you can go back to RamView and do file save or create secure project and it will create this .ksp file. Um, so I'm going to save that and it's going to have a notification about compatibility with previous versions. That's fine. Just click yes and you can set up uh, access here. So if you want access uh, read-only for your EEPROM and RAM copies, you can do that and we can click OK. And now we have a, a separate project here saved as uh, .ksp.
Okay, so now that we've exported our project from RamView, it's time to go to Codasys and use the data there. So I have a base template project that I created for a 3CM controller. And I will show you the steps we need to take to get our export file into here and um, add the library for KFX. So to start, let's click our project tree here in the Devices tab and go to Project Import PLC Open XML. And let's go to our folder here for our KFX project and select the .exp file. So once you do that, you can see it's converted some information here for code, uh, code use. It's got these global variable lists and structures for the different variable lists that we have. And there's additional information here just about the project. So I'll click OK to bring all this in. And we see a bunch of errors because we haven't added the KFX library yet. Um, so if I go to this POUs tab, here's the all the imported information for this KFX project. So all I need to do now is go to the library manager, add a library, and let's go to STW and then KFX driver, add that library. And now we still see a couple errors here. So what's happening is there are a series of steps we need to take to, to um, make this project compatible. In the release notes for 3CM Codasys version 3.5, Service Pack 6, it talks about um, it's not able to build generated Codasys exports um, with RamView version 1.13 R1. I was using 1.12 R3, and this, this still applies. Um, so what we need to do is we need to follow these steps, remove Codasys compiler attributes and then generate a global variable list. And what that means is we will go back to Codasys here in our KFX instance data global variable list. We have to just remove this group of entries here. Um, and also in the server data, remove the same group of entries. And that should cover the first step. Next step is we need to change the name of this variable um, in this structure to to this. So basically the U16 is changing to U8. So we got to find GTKFX NW data. And that is found in the KFX instance data global variable list here. And we just need to change this U16 to U8. We can ignore this last um, recommendation here because in my project, the version I have of Codis uh, this parameter is already set as a US int, so we can I can ignore that. If it's not, you need to change it from UN to US int. So now if I rebuild the code, you can see everything compiles okay. We have zero errors and zero warnings. And now we're ready to use the project. Uh, we can use all the variables, so if we go here we can look at our RAM list. We have our new parameter, new parameter 2. EE list has new parameter 1, 2, and 3. And then this structure has um, instances created of both of these lists for us. And finally, if we go to KFX server data, we'll see a global instance of this structure created for us. So this is the handle that we'll use in our code to access all the variables that we have here in our two lists. So part two is going to cover all that. It's going to cover reading EEPROM values and getting them into RAM data, writing back to EEPROM, making sure everything's good with your checksums, and then going into RAMView and looking at live data. So thanks for watching, and be sure to check out part two.